everyone, Miss Go Electric here. I'm in Long Beach, California at the Electrify Expo, and I definitely had to stop at the Lightship booth with the co-founder, Ben Parker. Now, I have been very tempted looking at it online. I've been like hovering over that order button, and I'm hoping today maybe you can get me to finish. This is press. your moment. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Well, so this is the Lightship L1. We are, uh, we're the first American electric RV manufacturer, and uh, this is our very first product. It is our flagship, and uh, we think of it as the kind of the perfect travel trailer for the age of electrification. This is in its, uh, called its camping mode, so it's about, about 10 feet tall, and you'll see if you look closely that the vehicle has two sections to it. Yes. There's a, a top and a bottom. The top we call the canopy. The bottom is, let's say, the tub. Um, and the two can move relative to each other. This is camping mode. This is road mode, okay, let's call it. Yeah. Uh, so the idea is that uh, as you are out on the road, you want the, the, the travel trailer to be as efficient and aerodynamic as possible. And so the whole vehicle collapses down to be about the height of the truck. Um, and this is actually where we did most of the aerodynamics engineering was to make this shape as aerodynamically efficient as possible. Where we got to is it's about, about three times as efficient as you know, aerodynamically as the next best. The motor, you're probably like, what, what, is, a, what is a motor <laughs> doing in a trailer? I thought they're, they're normally a, you know, a passive thing or dead weight. Well, in our case, the EV battery plus the motor allows the trailer to propel itself a little bit. So you can imagine that it's, it's actually helping the truck so as the truck is cruising down the highway, it feels almost nothing from the trailer and it can do that for 300 miles. So most, most EV trucks, you probably know, I mean, you've, you've, you've done the testing. If, you, uh, if you're towing any traditional travel trailer behind it, your 300 mile range becomes maybe a hundred mile range. It's about, about two thirds range loss at, at cruising speeds, which is most of your, you know, your, your travel as an RVer. By improving the, the aerodynamics and the, efficient, the passive efficiency of the vehicle alone, you can get back to about 200 miles of range. And then we wanted to get to the, you know, back to the full 300, because we think that's, uh, you know, that's sort of the, what you Sweet need. Spot. Yeah, that, that's how you do a real long distance EV road trip when you have that much range or greater. And so that last 100 miles we made up with the, the propulsion system um, and, and in doing so made a, uh, a new, new class of vehicle. Which is fascinating because a lot of people have a misconception that since you're carrying something so heavy behind you, that's the majority of the reason why you're getting such a huge range yeah. loss. But it's actually the majority of it is the aerodynamics, right? So that was probably a huge portion of the conversation when you were starting to create this. Aero is especially important for EVs because... Um, it's sort of the, the aerodynamics are the energy that is lost to the wind. It's energy that you can never recoup. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a, a, a heavy vehicle, you can still get some of that energy back through regenerative braking. So imagine if, you know, you use all this energy to get up to speed, but then as you're slowing back down, instead of just sort of uh, allowing it to go to the environment as heat, mm -hmm. for instance, you can recoup it back into the battery via regenerative braking. And the same goes downhill. So imagine if you're, if you're, towing a light ship um, and you're descending a mountain pass. Normally, you know, your, your, your trailer is basically pushing your truck on, on yep. that descent. But in our case, you can use the motor to do regenerative braking so that the trailer is actually not only more stably tracking, you're also putting the energy that you use to get up the mountain, up the Rockies, you know, back, back into back the battery. In the battery. Yeah. yeah. And so do you have a single motor on this? Can you give me a little bit of the specifications on the yes. powertrain itself? Yes. Uh, but you can you can see back there. Um, do you see just in the cradle there? There's a there's a subframe oh, yeah. down below, yeah. and the motor is mounted in there. The the two the two battery yep. packs, the high voltage EV battery packs, are up front here. You front bias it a little bit so you keep enough weight on the the tongue of the trailer for it to to tow tow safely. Um, so there are two packs conjoined here. What's the size of each pack? Two 40 kilowatt hour packs. Um, 40 kilowatt hour usable. They're, they're um, yeah, they're kind of true, true, true EV packs. Same, same technology as would go into a, you know, a passenger car or, or a commercial vehicle. And then that motor, uh, yeah. what is the output rating of that? I don't think we have released that spec <laughs> That's yet. Still a secret. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is designed specifically to give it just enough to propel it. Yeah, that's actually a key thing. Is um, you, you know, we tried to be really. Uh, 
clear-headed with ourselves about what the problem we're solving is. And it's really, it's really a range problem, which means it's an energy problem. So we didn't put a motor in there that is you know, huge and heavy and expensive and cause you're not going to, you're not going to go to the drag strip and put down right. quarter mile times with your, <laughs> with, with your, with your light ship trailer. Um, we really needed to. I wouldn't put it past some of the people on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, some might, and frankly, we might try that at yeah. some point because we're, we're crazy. So another thing that's important with EVs is tires. Is there a specific type of tire that you're using for this application? Yeah, we're, we're working with a couple of tire manufacturers to get to, you You got to get to a really low, low rolling resistance, yeah. of course. There's still a lot of work to be done on the compounding and, and even, even um, like some of the construction of the tire to, to get to, to lower and lower rolling resistances. Because that's one, one thing the you weight, find is that... The weight is a consideration too, because this thing yeah. is probably pretty heavy, right? Yeah, totally. It's, I mean, it's, um, you know, f fully loaded with water and, and cargo. It's a 7,500 pound trailer. So it's, it's t towable by any, any half ton truck, but... Um, not a not a featherweight. When you make a vehicle that is very aerodynamically efficient, the the tire drag becomes your next biggest contributor to to the the overall drag of the vehicle, which is what you know kills your fuel economy or, or your range. And so, um, once we sort of had the arrow solved, then the next the next area to go after and really really optimize or improve is, is the tires. And I noticed you have these panels that kind of cover over and around, which also helps contribute to that aerodynamic from the drag coming at the wheel. So that is kind of cool too. But I also see there's a lot of panels here. So is there storage underneath here? Yeah, there's um, pass-through storage there. So this would be like a garage. Um, we could access it from the other side too. It goes, goes as you, you'll see when we get in it, it goes underneath the bed. It looks beautiful when you have it up like this canopy. It makes it feel open and airy, I'm sure, when you get inside. Yeah. But um, as far as the materials that you're using, I know probably some people are looking at this and they are be maybe concerned about rock chips when they're yeah. driving. What's your plan if you haven't released, if you've released it yet, um, the plan for servicing and repairability and distribution for this? We've seen this in automotive too, where, there, where you know, vehicle cabins are more and more glass heavy and we're sizing the panels, the, the, you know, the, the windows correctly, making sure they're choosing the right, the right glass. Um, so if it's basically following automotive best practices there and, um, and and make sure that if one ever does get broken that it's easier to replace like a windshield would be. For sure. We are a true EV manufacturer and look to other EV manufacturers and how they are doing service and uh, you'll um, you'll see some notes that'll that'll transfer over to what we do. Interesting, cool. Yeah. So on the on the fixed portion of the roof, those solar cells, the panels are integrated into the roof line so that they you know, it's not, it's a it's a built-in feature. It's not bolted on, and that that is again in service of in service of the, yeah of the arrow. It's basically two in the fixed portion, and then uh, we have a. You may have seen on the website we have a set of solar awnings as well. Mm -hmm. So those awnings get you up to about three kilowatts, which which the average American house is four to five kilowatts. If you have almost as much solar in the roof of your light ship as you do in your home, uh, and you have five or maybe six Tesla power walls worth of energy on board, well, now you effectively have a very capable home solar system that's probably sitting in your driveway or on your property for like maybe 49 weeks out of the year. And so, uh, of course, you're going to make use yes, of that. Yes, and that's what I was really hoping to ask you today is about the ability to use this as maybe an uninterruptible power supply type concept. You know, if you're camping for a week or two on, on BLM land, let's say somewhere, you could be, the, the energy that you're capturing from the sun or is stored in your light ship, you can use to, to charge your, your truck at a, at a level two speed. So think, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour. And... Um, I think as it sits in people's driveways as well, we, there may be some people who decide to use this as your main your main vehicle charger. I think that there's also a lot of people who are going to use it for things like um, home power backup. So if, if the grid yeah. goes down, for instance, this is this is like the best and quietest generator that you've ever gotten that you don't you don't need to, to refuel because it's all it's always getting fueled from from the sky. Uh, yeah, and I think that's the unique selling point here. And I know that sometimes, you know, price can be a conversation that scares people yeah. away from a product like this that sits at what, like one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars or something along yeah. those lines, yeah. without any incentives or anything. Yeah. But to add that value proposition makes it a conversation to be had that this might actually be worth the investment to not only have it as a, a trailer, you can use it for so many other things. And most thing I'm I'm excited about is charging my e-bikes when I go out to a camping site. Yeah, so no. I'll be able to do that too, right? Oh, totally. I, I mean, uh, 
e-bikes, you know, AT, all, all, of, all of recreation is, and pet kind of powered recreation is going electric right now. So think about um, ATVs and four-wheelers and dirt bikes and like all, all of that stuff as it goes electric, you're going to want to charge it off of, off of your camper. And, Absolutely. And you probably don't want to run a generator to, at, you know, at your campsite to, to do that. And so ent enter the light ship. A big idea of the company and our products in general is that we would try to take what is a pretty underutilized asset or product right now. The RV only, you know, it only gets used maybe a few a few weekends a year. And, and how do we turn it into a much more highly utilized asset and get just get get more use out of this stuff? Especially as you're putting, um, you know, an, an EV powertrain on board, you're adding all this additional value. We want to make sure that the way that private owners use the product and even over time think about our business model we use these products in a in a higher value way so they're getting used more often throughout the year yeah that makes a lot of sense you know much of our team comes comes from the the auto industry and, and in particular the ev side of the automotive industry um, like our head of creative was was chief creative officer at rivian for for a couple of years oh, wow. rob is kind of taken that that heritage here too so you see it, it's in some of the details like um the way that the the windows are, are flush flush integrated to sure. the to the body, all of all of the surfacing is very automotive style. The, the tail lamp integration as well, very automotive style tail lamps, custom to the vehicle, and they they you know they are a part of the overall form. It's great for aero, but it's all, it's also a really kind of distinct modern automotive styling. Yep. That I mean, of course, of course, you notice the, uh, the 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 open hatch on the rear. It's 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 kind of tailgate inspired. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty cool if you're you know if you're if you're camping in a secluded area to, to pop, pop the, the hatch in the bathroom, maybe we're, we're talking about putting a little cleat on the, um, on, on the, on the mirrored portion okay, there. Yeah. So you could put your shower wand in there and you could take an outdoor oh, shower oh, interesting. as, yeah, like as, as you're out in a state forest or someplace like that where you're not going to be bothered. Very cool. Yeah. We, yeah. We love that feature. I think it's, that I think is it's, cool. It's kind of a, a quirk of history, but I first thought about Lightship. I was, I was working at Tesla. I was a battery engineer there for about five years. Um, and I Lightship came to be because I had this pet project while still at Tesla to try to electrify all of the food trucks in the Bay Area. Interesting. That was like that was the, the origins of it. And then eventually I would tell people about food trucks and RVs came up in conversation. And so I moved, you know, moved towards towards RVs and being a, a ground up vehicle manufacturer. But there's still uh, a funny coincidence that the way that the windows open is just like a food truck. Yeah. And so yeah. you can imagine I want to be. I want to be like right up here, and you're passing, exactly. you know, passing the food, the food between. You're you're cooking in the kitchen over there, and then you can bring it to this this main storage console, which you'll you'll see when you come inside. And uh, yeah, my my girlfriend and I have a a, a plan a couple of years out to road trip one of these across the country, maybe maybe during the 2026 World Cup because it's come back to to North America. Wow, yeah, that would this. be amazing. And we want to do. Uh, treat it like a food truck and do pop up pop up restaurants along the way and like That'd to, be to, amazing. To, to get the games and be, be be feeding people as we go. So ultimately, you have come to find that you have created. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of a the full, ultimate full electric, circle kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, electric yeah. food truck. Yeah. <laughs> right. It just so happens that you can take it out camping too. Step right up. Wow, so very modern design in here as Indeed. well. Indeed, if you spend a lot of time in in campers and travel trailers, typically it's a very low ceiling height. Um, yes. you're, you're you're used to for yeah, us tall yeah, folk. For, it's a you know it's a near residential ceiling, and you get that because we have the road mode and the camping mode, and because the the vehicle can can transform. But it gives um, a real feeling of of spaciousness when you're in a really nice area. You you like a natural area, you, you feel super connected visually to, to the outdoor environment that you're in. You go out into nature to experience it. So yeah. why not while you're in it, experience it. So that's really cool. Yeah, who's trying to camp in a box? Yeah, exactly. Um, I will say I've noticed the materials in here are very interesting. We have a re really awesome color material and finish designer. Her name's Jessica. She, actually, her, her background is a, uh, an aerospace background. So like she, she designed some Boeing's plane interiors and things like that. Oh, wow. Oh, she, she did, she's done automotive work as well. and. So you see her work in the whole color palette, um, in some of the bathroom design, in the lighting, for instance. You, you notice the, the lighting is this yep. very kind of diffuse, indirect lighting, which which maybe you're, you're used to in a in a plane, but not not so much in a space like this. Some of the fabrics that we use here, they're called it's called a three D knit fabric. Um, they're actually they're showing up in shoe uppers of all places. Those knit knit shoes, sure, like, yeah. like what Nike is doing. Similar technology here. Um, it, it's a really nice kind of like padded soft fabric, and you can make amazing patterns out of it so that this this gradient 
pattern that you see this you see this in some, some of our branding too we're concentrating on for instance making the fabric dippable as well as you could you know af oh, yeah. after a couple of years of, of using the light chip you could toss it in the wash you very know, nice wash touch. it and then put it back on you know choose one colorway over another that's a that that is an enabler generally what you should feel hopefully already do in, in the layout is that it's really easy to circulate in in the space because i uh i have been so annoyed over time when you get into an rv and there's like these little pinch points all, all through the layout so you're you know like you're you're working in the kitchen and no one no, can slide yeah, no, behind you no, like this. no one can yes. go to the bathroom i i cannot stand that my girlfriend and i have had that so many times so that that was a key thing was being able to circulate really easily in the space uh we've we've gone we've gone overboard we we once uh when our, our team was 25 people we put all 25 of us in here uh wouldn't wouldn't necessarily recommend having <laughs> 25 people in a light chip but it can it can be done let it let it be known generally the layout is divided up into a main bed in the front then a dinette in the center section the front would convert into um full a full full queen size bed so you oh can see, wow yeah so of, that slides out yeah exactly so this would be, this would be your the, the you know the foot of the bed very um, cool so think of the the dinette table of course it's a table by day okay drop but, down here yeah exactly you know you, you have a sleeping mat the thing goes down o over the whole surface so this it's kind of a queen size main bed and then a full sized full size second bed this is the the four person um layout let's say or the four person sleeping configuration we're also going to offer a six person option where okay um, there'll be a lofted bed or a third bed as well but for a small family, this this will do it. Now, one thing that I've noticed in here is that you have these bags that are tied to these tracks up yeah. top. So yeah. can you explain the thought behind this? Because that is very unique. I really yeah. like that to keep and take advantage of that vertical space when you can. I'm glad you like that. Uh, yeah, so um, let's see. We call it the gear rail system. And um, it actually it exists on, on both sides of the vehicle. It's meant to be a very flexible storage system. One of the big ideas is, okay, some people, if it's a if it's a larger family or maybe it's a couple that's going out for a long time, they, they might need more storage space than, um, you know, the console and the garage alone offer. So they can trade window space for, for more of like four or oh, five wow. of them up here, yeah. another, another three up there. So you can pack a lot of extra storage up there if, if you need it and if you choose it. We call it the gear rail because you, you can sort of put any of your gear up there. So imagine like, skis or snowboards or fishing poles it, it's a it's an only light chip feature and it is a very it's, it's like an area for customization so people can can do what they want with with the vehicle here on this tray you have a couple things that are embedded in the countertop wireless charging pad secure your cork, cork charging pad a big big countertop surface but um this will be some of your main storage in the in the vehicle as well so you can you know, you, you know these oh, okay. these four large compartments. I, I think a lot of people will end up putting, you know, clothing, for instance, in there. Is this on a, like a drawer, or is it just a this, face this is a, Yeah, this is a false face because the the wheel well is right, oh, yeah, right yeah, behind yeah. it. Um, yeah, it's it's. I'm I'm glad I'm glad that that was not apparent though. It means it means the design team did that well. The heating and air conditioning. The actually the main vents are. It's just behind and wrapping all the way around oh, the, wow. the lounge here, so it's sort of a hidden hidden vent and it wafts up. Uh, Smart ar design, around the yeah. windows and then comes in. Um, we, it's a it's a it's a automotive heat pump style, uh, you know, it, it, air conditioning and and, and heater. Um, the the loud bits like the compressor, for instance, are out on the tongue because you don't have propane cans anymore, so you can make use of that space for for you know for something better. Uh, it's awesome because you know you can get rid of what's normally an enormous cutout in in the ceiling for your big noisy <laughs> air, exactly. air conditioner vibrates the whole thing now. Put the put the stuff you don't want to hear far away, and just have the quiet blowers inside. Some EVs that are on the road today don't even have a heat pump to try to gain better efficiency. So really cool that you guys have that as well. Yeah, it's about, I mean it's it's essential for you know for for an all electric vehicle in a space this big. It's about three times as as efficient as a you know typical resistive heater, um, like a space heater. So had had to go that way. It's a three season camper, so you're probably not going to go. With, dead of winter in Alaska with it, but um, there are still cold snaps overnight. You need to make sure that you have enough enough power to, to you know, to keep the cabin um, comfortable. Now let's continue on the technology talk because oh, I yes. see that there's a screen up front here and I, oh, want, yeah. I want to know what that is all about. All right. This is our first first version of um, 
you know, the, the light chip infotainment system. This is the digital portal into, into using the product. Um, but both in terms of seeing what's happening inside of it and then, and then controlling certain parts of it. So For sure. lights, you know, and you can, you can turn, turn lights on and off. You do your climate control in there, doors and windows. Um, this is where you see the status of all of the, the closures. Let's say the, the doors and the windows. The tint on it is photochromatic, ah, so yes. it can change tint. Privacy clearly matters here when you have this, this, this many windows. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about that. This is where you'd also raise and lower the canopy as you're going between road, you know, ro road mode and camping mode. See all of your, your water tank status. You can see what, you know, what, what's happening with your holding tanks. And then, of course, because because we have this effectively a solar system combined with an EV powertrain, you've got to you've got to have a means of seeing that and managing it. And so you can you can do all of that via wow. um, yeah via a viz screen like that. Preconditioning your RV is like even more impactful than preconditioning your car. Absolutely. It. So it's like I would love to get back here and have it be sixty eight degrees even on a hot day because I and, and then go take a shower because I'm you know I like had a great day out hiking and now I just want to be comfortable again. Uh, you can you can do that, and you could even do that remotely from you know from your phone as you're as you're approaching the, the the light chip. Like with with good passenger cars nowadays, your light chip will keep getting better over time. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. What is this material? Um, it's, it's called bolon. It's a it's a, it's a woven vinyl material. It's it's. Can you spray it down? Yep. Exactly. So it's it's like moppable, vacuumable, e easy to clean, and yeah, you can you can you can hit it with a hose if, if you need to. What is the process and how you order one of these? Okay, it's easy. Uh, yeah, we, we launched we launched about two months ago. That was when we finished this vehicle too, and we're we're going to production. Um, goal is at the very end of next year, and then ramping throughout 2025. And so we opened up this this reservation bank to. Um, uh, basically, allow, allow people to actually like get get their spot. Um, it's a it's a so it's a uh, five hundred dollar down refundable deposit, and you go to lightchiprv.com, which we're gonna do right now, and then do reserve VL one. Um, this is it, just informational, but it lets you know that there are gonna be these two two different variants Versions. variants of the product. Um, one with all electric camping and drive. That's the long range, and then one with um, all electric camping. And so, yeah, you do your do your reservation. Here we go. Now you can't see this in information. Your contact info, <laughs> yeah, blur that out. And I did it. This is my order confirmation, and it officially makes this the most expensive video we've produced at a cost of at least one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. I can't wait to get one and start filming with it. So, just one last thing that I want to talk about real quick is that you mentioned, you know, class A, B, C, these yeah. different types of, and obviously this is your first product, the L one. So I got to imagine there's a two, three, four, five, whatever's coming. Yeah. Um, but do you see yourself going in those different sectors as well? Travel trailers and towable RVs is that is the dominant form of RVing, and this is a little bit like our Tesla Roadster. It is um, it's, halo car type idea. Yeah, exactly. We'll sell thousands of them, and ultimately the trajectory and the purpose of the business is towards scale and impact. And to do that, we need to make more and more products that keep addressing more and more of the mainstream of the market because they're you know in the mainstream of the market there are hundreds of thousands of trailers sold every year and that's that's where we want to go um so yeah successive products that are already kind of in the in, in the roadmap now are going to be more and more accessible to to people and also address um different uh you know different lifestyles dif different needs because because people do have different needs within within their their towable absolutely parties. so that's well, that's what the future looks like i i have to say this is a really great place to start and you guys are doing amazing things i'm so excited to get my own <laughs> to really honestly like this is right up my alley so thank you for spending so much time with us today ben we are over the moon to be able to see the product finally inside it out and learn so much more from you today so thank you guys for watching and until next time drive fly ride go electric go electric